Hey everyone, it's Monica and today I'm so excited to be here because I am going to be talking about a topic that is very near and dear to my heart and that is audiobooks, specifically going to be talking about my favorite audiobooks of all time. Now I love reading via audiobook. I think that they just really offer a very unique reading experience and my favorite thing is when you discover a narrator or a, a an audiobook that's been formatted in a way that really goes above and beyond to bring the reader into the story, to really bring the characters to life, create that ambiance. And these books that I'm going to be sharing in this list are ones I just think do this fantastically, that are incredibly immersive, that are just really beautifully voiced. And I know that a lot of you also read via audiobooks. So if you have any recommendations, please leave them in the comments down below. I am always on the hunt for just a really amazing, unique audiobook. A couple of these I discovered because they're recommendations. Now, before I jump into the actual list, I want to give a big shout out to Playster for sponsoring today's video. If you guys are not familiar with Playster, they are basically an all-in-one app for bibliophiles. They have over 100,000 audiobooks, 250,000 ebooks, Books, along with bookish movies and music and all that kind of stuff that you're able to consume on an unlimited basis each month. I actually originally heard of Playstar over the holidays because my sister had just switched to them because she listens to audiobooks every day to and from work. And so having that unlimited amount of books was really important to her. And as a voracious reader myself, it's important to me too. I'm not here for limits when it comes to reading and I hate waiting to read the book that I want to read, you know? They also have a variety of different plans and pricing structures so that whatever it is that you most want to be accessing, you're able to just pay for that. So that is Playstar. If you want to check them out, I have a promo code MONICA60. Not an, It's not an affiliate code. I don't earn anything from it, but it does give you guys 60 days of their basic all access media for $6, but that expires March 16th in case you are interested in that. So now on to the audiobooks. The first book that I want to talk about is one that I've actually read pretty recently and it just had such a huge impact on me because of the way that the story was told and that is Echo by Pam Munoz Ryan. 50 years before the war to end all wars, a boy played hide and seek with his friends in a pear orchard bordered by a dark forest. Matilde, who was it, sat on a boulder, buried her head against her knees, and began to count to one hundred. The boy hurried away, determined to stay hidden longer than all the others, hoping to impress Matilde. Her lilting voice intrigued him. Even now, as she counted, her words sounded sing-song. Thirty-six, thirty-seven... 38, 39. Although it was strictly forbidden, the boy ran into the forest to hide. Now for this book, I've basically been saying it's sort of like if you took the book thief, but mixed it with like cocoa and smushed them together. And that's kind of what Echo, at least like the vibe of Echo is. This is a middle grade story and it celebrates music and humanity at its best. It's so so beautifully written. It is basically cocooned with this fairy tale story, but inside of that it is very much so grounded in historical fiction. Um, you follow three different sets of kids. First child that you follow is this little boy who's growing up in the lead up to Nazi Germany and you see how that is affecting him and his family. The story itself is absolutely breathtaking. The audiobook really adds to that by because music has such a huge part in this book. They actually had musicians come in and play different pieces of music when it's being referred to in the story and that just adds to the ambiance, adds to the magicalness of the book itself. And just the way that the narrators read the different parts of the book is just so beautiful and lush. Like, especially the, the narrator who does the fairy tale element of the story, just like, uh, I was in tears because it was so beautiful and you know it's one of those stories that really I feel like gives you so much hope for humanity and the world and and reminds you of like the power of love and music and 
it was just like so wonderfully wonderfully done and I highly recommend if you read this book to read it via the audiobook because again it just goes above and beyond to bring that that story and the world to life and to just suck you right in like I, I just felt like I fell into this story. The next book I want to talk about is one that was actually one of my first audiobooks that I ever listened to. It's one of the audiobooks that really introduced me to how like amazing the world of audiobooks could be and that is Furiously Happy by Jenny Lawson. I have avoidance personality disorder which is like social anxiety disorder on speed and occasional depersonalization disorder which makes me feel utterly detached from reality but in less of a this LSD is awesome kind of way and more of a I wonder what my face is doing right now and it sure would be nice to feel emotions again sort of thing. I have rheumatoid arthritis and autoimmune issues and sprinkled in like paprika over a mentally unbalanced deviled egg are things like mild OCD and trichotillomania, the urge to pull one's hair out, which is always nice to end on because whenever people hear the word mania, they automatically back off and give you more room on crowded airplanes. Probably because you're not supposed to talk about having manias when you're on a crowded airplane. This is one of the reasons why my husband Victor hates to fly with me. The other reason is that I often fly with taxidermied creatures as anxiety service animals. Basically, we don't travel a lot together because he doesn't understand awesomeness. Now, this is actually a memoir by Jenny Lawson, and it's it's a strange book because it is very, very funny, but the book itself is about mental health and, and you know, being sort of on the verge of a mental breakdown. And and definitely there's a lot of trigger warnings in here for, for suicide and depression and all of that. When I first started off listening to audiobooks, one of the things that I really started doing first was to, to go to the memoir section because it just sort of made sense to me that if I'm going to read a book about someone's life, it makes sense to hear them tell it to me firsthand, to hear it in their voice. And that's how I really, for me, got into audiobooks and, and realized how amazing they could be. And Jenny Lawson in particular is just hilarious. Like, like hearing her story by her and like hearing like the way that she pauses and, and, and just the way that she inflects different words and, and just how she talks in general, I think has a huge impact on, on how the book comes across because like she talks in a very distinct way that when you listen to the book via audiobook it just in my opinion makes it all the more hilarious and poignant at the same time and definitely again one of my favorite books if you um if you are interested in memoir and you haven't listened to furiously happy yet i highly recommend it because i think it's one of my favorite memoirs that i've ever read or listened to the next book i want to talk about is beauty queens by loba bray as we said, this book begins with a plane crash, but there are survivors. You see, already it's a happy tale. They're all beauty queen contestants. You do not need to know their names here, but you will get to know them. They are all such nice girls. Yes, they are nice, happy, shining, patriotic girls who happen to have interests in baton twirling, sign language, AIDS prevention in the animal population, the ancient preparation of poppadom, feminine firearms, interpretive dance, and sequins. Such a happy story, and shiny too. This story is brought to you by the corporation, because your life can always be better. TM. I love this one because Libba Bray narrates it herself, and she does all of the voices, and she is a goddess she goes all in like when she gets to the reality show pirates which yes that is part of the plot of the story when she gets to them oh my goodness it's just i will never get over how perfect the story is if you have never heard of beauty queens it is the story of a plane full of beauty queens who are on their way to a pageant but they crash and land on this deserted island. So I've always compared beauty queens to like Miss Congeniality meets Mean Girls meets Lord of the Flies. This book is so good and the audiobook really brings it to life again because Libba Bray just really goes all in with the characters and the voices and, and brings her story to life. If you're looking for an audiobook that's gonna have you just laughing constantly, highly recommend Beauty Queens. It's one of my favorite satires 
of all time. It's amazing. The next book I want to share is In Order to Live by Yeonmi Park. I was only nine months old when Kim Il-sung died on the 8th of July 1994. North Koreans worship the 82-year-old great leader. At the time of his death, Kim Il-sung had ruled North Korea with an iron grip for almost five decades, and true believers my mother included, thought that Kim Il-sung was actually immortal. His passing was a time of passionate mourning and also uncertainty in the country. The great leader's son, Kim Jong-il, had already been chosen to succeed his father, but the huge void Kim Il-sung left behind had everyone on edge. This story is about one girl's survival and escape of North Korea. And again, we have another memoir, like as you guys know, like I love audiobooks, um, listening to memoirs via audiobooks because I think that they just sort of make it all the more powerful. Now for this one, they actually didn't have the writer narrate her own story, but they did. And the reason why it's on this list and why I appreciate it so much is that they didn't get a Western or someone with a Western accent to narrate the audiobook. They got someone who had a Korean accent to narrate the story. And I think that that is so important. I think when we talk about whitewashing, we also have to talk about the different ways that that can happen. You know, I remember when there was a movie that came out a few years ago and one of the characters, they he spoke English, but they didn't like they they were worried that people wouldn't understand him through his accent and so they dubbed over him with another actor's voice with like a, a western american accent and that has never sat well with me um and, and i think that when we talk about issues of whitewashing you know that really does come into it so often accents are seen especially and not all accents but if you have like what is seen as like a non-white accent you're often seen as or they're consciously or subconsciously less than in a lot of places. And as someone who is Korean American, who has family members who do have Korean accents and views that, like they are the smartest people I know. And to see other people like think less of them because they can speak more than one language is absurd to me. And so that's one of the reasons why I thought it was really, really powerful and important that they, they got a narrator and didn't whitewash the narration of the story itself because, you know, this book was a bestseller. So many people listened to it. Um, and so I thought that was really, really important. And I thought she told the story beautifully. Um, the story itself is harrowing. It is difficult to listen to, but it is so important. Honestly, when you're first reading it, it reads like you're, you're reading a dystopian fiction because it, like, you know, coming from not North Korea, it's it's unfathomable the things that she lives through um, but the story itself is amazing highly highly recommend listening to it um, because I think it's just invaluable so the last book on this list I feel a little bit like a cheater because it's I'm, I'm including two books by the same author but not the same narrator and also like I can't not include both of these books you know they just they're so good but the next book is The Diviners by Libba Bray. Fashionable debutantes in pastel chiffon party dresses wilt into leather club chairs like frosted pettifors melting under the July sun. A cocky Princeton sophomore wants his friends to head down to Greenwich Village with him to a speakeasy he heard about from a friend of a friend. The hostess, a pretty and spoiled young thing, notes her guest's restlessness with a sense of alarm. It is her 18th birthday, and if she doesn't do something to raise this party from the dead, it will be the talk for days to come that her gathering was as dull as a church social. Raising from the dead. The weekend before, she'd been forced to go antiquing upstate with her mother, an absolutely hideous chore, until they came upon an old Ouija board. Ouija boards are all the rage. Psychics have claimed to receive messages and warnings from the other side using Mr. Fold's talking board. Now, Libba Bray, I think just like, I don't know, she just lucks out with her audiobooks apparently. But January Lavoie is the one who does Libba Bray's Diviner series audiobooks. And she is a queen. Oh my goodness. I just, every time I listen to a Diviner's book, I just feel totally sucked into the story. January Lavoie's voice is one that I, like, she could read me the dictionary and I would just find it 
fascinating and compelling. She, the way that she talks is so perfect for the story because she's able to exude this sort of kind of old-timey and I'm not sure if that's how she talks in real life or if she like puts on the voice specifically for this book um, but she does it masterfully like it, it, you feel like you're you're hearing someone tell you like you're by the fire and you hear like the crackle of like a record player and just January Lavoie's voice sort of like warmly telling you this spooky super atmospheric story and that's how you feel for me at least that's how I feel when I'm listening to a diviner's book because she is just I think the queen of narrating. Oh my goodness, I love her. If you guys don't know what The Diviner is about, it is about a group of teens in New York City in the 1920s who end up developing different divine abilities. So like being able to read an object by touching it or a dream walk. And it is, I think, the best YA series being published right now, in my opinion. The metaphors that Libba Bray builds in this book are so brilliant and I love the story because it's fun, you know, it's it's so fun and atmospheric and at the same time it's full of so much depth with the plot and the characters. Like, you know, there's not just like one sort of overarching plot, there is like layers of plot going on um, and the characters, the way that they interweave and they're so distinct despite having so many characters, every single one is so distinct and unique. And then the story itself I think is just such an amazing metaphor for America and the American dream and it's, it's just so brilliant. It's so brilliant and it's also like very very spooky. Like the first book gave me nightmares but it's not too scary. Like I can't watch scary movie. That's too scary for me and I am fine with the diviners. So don't think it's too scary. Just just read it. It's amazing. Listen to the audiobooks. They're particularly amazing and yeah I just I love this series so much I want everyone to read it however they can so yeah those were my favorite audiobooks of all time again I would love to hear your guys suggestions because Echo was a book that like hadn't been on my radar at all until it was suggested to me on Twitter to listen to and I'm so so thankful that it was um, but please let me know your favorites in the comments down below and thank you again to Playster for sponsoring this video bye